Okay. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state and across the country. Now, um, We do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. And they are recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, you can always watch any of the recordings we have on the website. Uh, we cover all sorts of different things. Um, we do training sessions, interviews, book talks, uh, whatever, um, presentations, anything to think about, think of. Uh, if it's related to libraries, that's really the only criteria. We'll put it on the show. <laughs> um, and we have people from um, outside come in. We have guest speakers. We also have commission staff do presentations, and that's what we have today. Um, and we have Michael, Sally, and Laura here, and I'm going to let you guys do your own intro introductions and whatnot. They're going to show us how to do video book talks yes. and put yep. them up on our website and all sorts of fun things with them. Right. So I'll just hand over to you guys, and you can you know, introduce yourselves if you want and just okay. say who you are and what you're doing. And okay. you guys have a thing to prepare. Well, we, we introduce this direction because Laura's going to kind of pick it up where we're uh, yeah. with the beginning. So I'm Michael Sowers. I'm the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And as part of this show, I'll be kind of picking up the, the, the last portion and, and doing the kind of the, the technical aspects of creating the video and editing the video. I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the Children and Young Adult Library Services Coordinator. And I'll be talking about how to write book talks. And I'm Laura Johnson, and um, I'm here uh, because this was my big fat idea. Um, <laughs> and, and so, you know, um, we had a really good time this summer when we did our, our tech rodeo at Dunn College. And uh, one of the things we did there was to make videos. And we kind of wanted to uh, keep the momentum going. Um, we think that this is something that could be very useful for people. Um, it's something you can put on your website. It's something you could do with your patrons, with your uh, city officials, with your teens. Um, and so we just thought, you know, this might be fun. And it's a fun. It's fun. It's a fun thing to do. So um, first I think Sally's going to talk about how to do book talks. And then we're going to talk about a few tips about um, doing a video, and then we're actually going to show you. We, we are in real time going to create this video. So um, bear with us because who knows what will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, take it away. That is exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this could all be a huge disaster. Yeah. It'll be wonderful. It will be perfect. Even if it's a disaster, oh, it will be a wonder wonderful learning experience. It'll be, it'll be, yes. <laughs> well, first off, I'd like to say that book talks are different from book reviews. Book reviews are designed to evaluate a book and let people know what are the positives and negatives about that book that they may want to purchase for their library or for their home. Book talks are designed to entice someone to want to read the book. So while if you're giving a book review, you might give away a major plot point because you feel it's important to let people know that. In a book talk, you definitely do not want to give anything like that away. Joni Bodart, who's a well-known name in the field, she has some unbreakable rules for book talking. First off, she says, don't tell the end of the story. So don't do that. <laughs> Second, don't talk about a book that you have not read. Now, there are some caveats about that. You can get away with that if you're careful. But really, it's better to have read the book. And she says, only talk about books that you personally love, because that comes through the book talk. And um, if you just are mediocre about the book, you're not going to have that same energy level that you will if it's a book you love and you're trying to convince people to give it a try. So how do you write a book talk? Well, first off, I would say to write your main points ahead of time. Write it down and use bullet points because you don't want to be reading from a piece of paper like this. And I, even though I do that for my book reviews, it's not good. You're not really having a conversation with people, and that's what you want to do. This is like if someone came in the library and said, well, what's good? What should I be looking at? And you pull some books off the shelf, and you tell them a little bit about it. You are doing book talks right then. OK, so that's not as comfortable, maybe, sometimes, because you can't quite remember. Is a character, well, for kids, they want to know, is a character 8 or 12? That's important for kids. Mm -hmm. For adults, you know, not the same thing. 
So uh, you can talk in first person or third person. Most of the time people do book talks in third person because too much first person is kind of pretentious. So use it sparingly. If you're going to do several book talks to put up on your website, then think of that, about that. But really it comes down to what you're comfortable with and what works for the book you're talking about. And sometimes first person will be perfect, other times will go, this just isn't working. For each book, you need to think about the hook. What is that big thing that you're going to leave the person with that makes them really want to take a look at that book? So find, figure that out first, and it's usually pretty obvious. So you don't have to dig deeply, probably. And if you do, choose a different book would be my recommendation. So find your hook and jot that down and then start thinking about, okay, what are the other things that I need to tell people about this book to give them a framework for this hook? So it might be something like the main character is a 15-year-old boy, or it might be that the setting is the near future, if that's important to the story. Tell them a few things about the story, jot them down, rearrange them, work through them, and then when you have that written down, set it aside and go do something else. Come back later look at it again because I always put too much information down because I like this little quirky thing and that little quirky thing and I want to tell everybody all about it. Well, no, that's too much. Pick one quirky thing at the most if that's really important to you, but, but find those things that are a key to conveying what the book's about. Then you're going to want to practice. So practice looking in the mirror, practice sitting at your desk, practice with a friend, any of those, um, to get comfortable. You need to be comfortable. And if you've never done book talking before, it'll take a little bit of practice. I would also recommend practice writing book talks and practice giving the book talks. Let's do a few, you know, four or five, so that you're more comfortable with the whole process. And then start to record some of your book talks. And you might choose some books that, as it turns out, just aren't the right choices. Uh, and that's okay. Because while you might like the book and think it's fun, if it's not the right one for you to talk about, let it go. Pick a different book. Because I'm sure there's plenty of books that you have really enjoyed. Um, we also want to talk about how long should the book talk be. And that, again, is up to you and the book you're talking about. See, so I'm throwing all of this back on you, I know. But it really does depend on you, what you're comfortable with and how complicated the book is. You can talk about a complicated book, but uh, you have to pick those particular items to talk about that will convey the most information that you want to give people to give them a sense of the book. So that's, um, again, practice and think about it. Write it down, put it down, go away, come back. Those are the main points I wanted to make. So shall we do a book talk? Okay. Um, well, what we're going to do is, yep, yeah, we're going to talk about video. Talk about well, and thanks. Why don't you go ahead and be setting up, and I can do this for you. No, well, I want to okay. talk about some oh, things. Okay. Doing. But I do want to start out by saying that um, at this point, we're using book talks as kind of to, to, to frame this, but this is also about video creation. So a lot of what Laura's going to talk about now and then what I'll do afterwards is actually going to apply kind of regardless of whether you're doing a book talk video or a review or just that it's something of, of an event at the library. So. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to give you a couple tips um, that these things help make your videos a little bit better if you've never done a video before. Um, and I think the first thing is, though, jump in and do it. Try it. Because it's all digital. It, if, if it's rotten. You can just forget, dump the file. It doesn't take that long. It's just like all those bad camera pictures on your digital camera. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just go ahead and try it out. Um, but don't give up. If it's bad, don't yeah. give up. Keep practicing. But then, you know, then the next thing we say is, well, you might want to plan it just a tiny bit, which is to say, you know, if, if you have someone um, who's going to make the video of you doing the book talk, perhaps you want to have discussed how you're going to hold up the book and, and what's going to happen, um, just so you all kind of know. Um, one of the really important things is the lighting, which you can see from us. We have terrible lighting here. Um, I feel like I'm kind of in the witness protection program because you can hardly see me. Um, 
so what you really want, if, if you can manage it, um, is to have, you want the light to be shining on the book talker's face. Um, the worst thing you can do is have the light behind that person. He really will look like he's in witness protection at that point. Um, so you want light shining on his face, and if you can, you want it slightly above his face at a 45 degree angle coming in, and then you want another light at another angle so that it sort of takes the shadows out from the first one, if, if that makes any sense. Anyway, you kind of want two light sources, and they say don't mix up your kinds of light, so don't have fluorescent and incandescent. Oh, Choose one or the other. Here, don't we? Probably. Yeah, it's not weird. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> but this is, what, this is what everybody says. Um, try to have a plain background when, when uh, something behind you. Um, it might sound like a really good idea to stand in front of um, a bookshelf when you're doing this. It's a very bad idea because people will be wanting to read the spines of the books behind you. Um, I, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I have that book, and I have that book, and I have that book, and I've read that one, and yeah. I've read that one. Yeah. I've, so I've, you, really, <laughs> you really want something really plain behind you if you can, and you want to uh, kind of be plain. This is not the time to wear um, something with flowers or a big print. Um, Oh, big, really important thing that I think Michael will probably talk about is you do want to use a tripod or something else that will hold the camera steady. There's nothing that's going to make you look more amateurish than having a bouncy, um, a bouncy video. So you do want a tripod. Um, they say, until you get good at this, do not zoom or pan. Your camera will have those capabilities because all of your cameras do that now. In fact, your phone probably doesn't, um, but don't do it. They say that doesn't that doesn't look good. Um, record extra at the beginning and the end. In other words, turn your camera on and get a few frames before the person starts talking. And when the person's done, leave the camera on for you know 10, 15 more seconds. Um, this gives you a little bit of leeway when you're editing. Um, frame things very tight, which means you want to get pretty close to the person's head. Don't cut off their head. Um, Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> you know you you want to you want to have some room above his head, but at the same time, you don't you want to really be able to see the person's features. Um, and uh, oh, what's the other thing? Oh, composing the shot. If you think about what's going to be on your screen as a you know kind of a, a square and then you put a grid on it like a tic-tac-toe grid you want the person's I don't know if this head is yeah That's to be at sorry yeah, to be <laughs> at the cross of the tic-tac-toe so he's not right in the middle um, he's slightly to one side but it's going it's just going to look better they say um, so those are some of the things that will kind of help you out. Just think about a few of those things yep. when you're making a video. Um, for those of you who want to do more uh, or find maybe a little more detail, uh, lighting, just Google search video lighting. Oh, you'll find a lot, um, yeah. The other one would be uh, the, the grid that Laura was just talking about. It's called the rule of thirds. So if you Google rule of thirds, photography, video, things like that, you'll, you'll be able to pull that up and in any level of minimal detail to whole books on just that topic. So um, that's available. And so as Laura said, uh, and, and so I'll, I'll uh, uh, rephrase as, as do as we say, not as we do. Yeah. Um, because ultimately all these suggestions are wonderful suggestions, um, but then you still got to work with what you've got. Yes, the ideal. So, yeah, so we've got this room, <laughs> and as you can see, my head is kind of in these windows back here, and uh, there's not much of a flat plane wall in the room. Uh, in fact, we just took over here, we're going we're gonna to record Sally in just a moment, and we actually took something off the wall, uh, which you can't see from, from the, what you're looking at right now, but you'll see in the video we create, um, because it was a, a framed painting. Wonderful painting, but the problem is the glass was causing reflections of the light from the ceiling, and that just would have caused, caused weird spots uh, in, the in our video. So you've still got to work with what you've got to work with. 
So uh, we're going to do the best we can here. So what I've got is a couple of things. Uh, one is uh, we have a flip cam here. It's a little uh, HD video camera. Uh, they don't make these anymore, but you can get similar from other uh, companies. I was just kind of shopping on behalf of somebody for about 120 bucks. Um, also check with TechSoup for yeah. uh, deals for, for libraries. Um, the system, uh, the oh, yes. systems have purchased flip cams and they have them ready for you to borrow. Right. So if you're in Nebraska and you want to borrow one to play with it, call yeah. your system administrator. Uh, I have attached mine to a little flip video tripod. So let's see here. Just a little tiny tripod. Yeah, there we go. If I hold it in front of my shirt, it's a little more viewable there. Um, so that's just going to add our stability so we can uh, set it there and I can point it at Sally. And the tripod is like $14. Yeah, 14 something yeah. like that, it's $14. And actually, most of these video cameras are the, the tripod attachment, the, the, this, this, where you screw the tripod in, is standard. So we've, we've got a $100 tripod on our big camera there. We could actually attach this little dinky camera to the 18-pound super steel tripod if we wanted to. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much a standard. Now, the other thing, and maybe you can see here from where the camera is, is at this height, and Sally's at this height. Okay, and so we could, you know, shoot up at Sally if we wanted to, but uh, as we were practicing yesterday, uh, Sally was not um, thrilled with that idea. <laughs> so, uh, I've got one more prop. This is the super high-tech stack of books. <laughs> You probably got uh, one of these lying around in your library somewhere, yeah. and so we just kind of set that up there. And now, as you can see, our, our excuse me, as I fall off my chair, our height's a little better off. So what we're going to do here? Improvisation is happening. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, we've we've, we've done this. We we've, we've used this stack of books many a time in this room for for various things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, and Sally <coughs> has got a book talk prepared for us. So I'm going to get this on, and I'm going to frame with Sally, and we're going to have Laura just kind of move yeah, out of move. my frame here, and I'm going to get this set up about there, because I know where Sally's going to hold the book. And so I'm going to hit record. She's going to wait a couple of seconds, and then she's going to give her book talk, and then when we're all done, I'll kind of uh, take it from there with the software involved. <laughs> so we're hitting record now. Ungifted by Gordon Corman. Donovan is well known for playing pranks in the school. As a matter of fact, he has zero impulse control, and a couple of friends usually are encouraging him to do things. But it was a complete accident the day that he... And we have to cut for a second. Oh. Um, we have a slight problem. The battery just died on our camera. Oh, that is a slight problem. Um, Not shoot. We thought of everything else. We did. Um, so let me see here. This is a kind with double A, so they're not rechargeable. Um, so, um, what are we going to do here I really have some quick. in my office. I, I will go get some. Or, Krista, do you want to go get some? We can talk about things. There yeah, um, Sue, uh, uh, Diane yeah. has them. Oh, okay. So we've already, uh, lesson number one, make sure all of your equipment is fully charged and ready to be used because that is probably the one thing I didn't actually didn't check yesterday. So I'm going to take complete and full responsibility <laughs> for this one. Um, so um, what can we talk about? If you have questions, uh, you can yes, type them into the questions area and we'll, we'll happily uh, do these. Uh, Laura, why don't you talk a little bit more about what we were doing at the rodeo and, and how we, we started this up. How, how, did, okay. how did that go? Uh, okay. Um, our tech rodeo this summer, uh, we brought a group of people together. Uh, many of them were scholarship students from the, um, the IMLS grant scholarships that we have. Um, and we tried to do a couple of um, technology things. Doing videos was one of them. Um, we had, we put, people were in groups of five or six. Um, they'd never seen these cameras before. They had really less than, less than 48 hours. Yeah. And they came up with finished videos. Um, they took the video, they edited the video, and we showed the videos. They were a hoot. They are on, <laughs> they are on YouTube, uh, if you'd like to see them. Um, and one of the big points of this, really, was that just getting in there and doing it sometimes will teach you as much about it 
sure, there are things you can learn. There are mm -hmm. tips that help make it easier. There's, uh, you might want to read about it. But, you know, it's not something to be scared of. This is very low risk. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that's going to happen is that you're going to get a really bad video. <laughs> and then, you know, try again. Your next one will be better. Yep. So, um, our Tech Rodeo, we, uh, we did some... <coughs> We did some work on live presentation, we did some work on screen capture, and we did some work on video. Um, we hoped that everybody, everybody seemed to be having a good time, but I think they were very polite people. Um, <laughs> All right. So, but I think we did make the point that you just have to try it. Yep. Um, I'll also throw in, as, as I was kind of shuffling around there for um, things, um, chances are if you have a smartphone, yeah. You have a video camera these days, yeah. fully high definition. Um, I, I, for half a second, thought I'll just immediately switch to my phone and mm -hmm. record the video, but I don't have the right cable to get the video off of the uh -huh. phone in the room or in, even in my office. So that's why I ended up saying, let's just go find some But if batteries. you did have that yourself, there's an option for you. Yes. If you want to try this out and don't even want to go out and buy a camera yet, just do a little experiment with your phone. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to have uh, Sally, before you start it again, <coughs> uh, hold up the book again to make sure it's in. Sh okay, that'll be perfect. Okay. All right. So we're going to hit record, and we'll, we'll do a take two. <laughs> Ungifted by Gordon Corman. Donovan is well known for playing pranks around the school. He has zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. But it was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed the high, the junior, middle school. Ah, uh, see where I went. Okay. Is this a flub? Yes, this, this would be a flub. <laughs> okay, so I need to start back at, it was a complete accident. Right? Okay. Oh, okay. While we're messing around. Mm -hmm. It was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed the front of the junior high school gym and interrupted the big important basketball game. He's called into the superintendent's office immediately, and the superintendent writes down his name and his school, and then is called away for another emergency. Donovan is off the hook, just briefly. He knows it's going to come any time. Imagine his surprise when a letter arrives at his home, and his family is informed that he has been selected to attend the Academy of Scholastic Distinction. Donovan knows that he is not gifted. He barely passes his class at the, at the junior high, so he knows he has no chance at the academy. However, the superintendent will never think to look for him there. Ungifted by Gordon Corman. All right, great, okay. Uh, so, um, as you could, as you were watching me there, I was kind of keeping an eye. There's a little LCD screen on the back of this, so I was kind of making sure she stayed in shot. She did that. Um, I didn't do any zooming or panning. That's you know, it's it, the the total with with the flubs and the backup was about a minute and forty six seconds. So we we got under our our two minutes. And uh, you may have noticed I was writing something down. Um, if if you do have flubs. Um, you can edit them out, and uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to do my best to do that. So what I did was I kind of wrote down on a little piece of paper about where that happened so I know in the video where I'm going to have to get to. Now, um, one thing you want to think about in this case, it was only about 20 seconds in. Probably we could have just started over and, and just edited the whole thing out. Um, but we want to show you what, what editing is like uh, just a little bit here. So I'm going to disconnect it from my tripod. And we're going to kind of switch the view here as to what's going on. So give us just a sec to share our whole desktop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just as a USB cable in the flip cam. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in to our USB cable. Mm -hmm. And what should come up momentarily is the flip cam software. Now, how you get the video off of your device is going to vary based on your device. Um, some devices will be a USB connection, and it is now acting like a flash drive. Uh, some will have their own software that will then take over as, as Flipshare is loading up here. <clears throat> if I was doing this on my phone, I would probably also connect a USB cable, or if I actually, you could ignore these little error messages with our software. Um, if I was doing this with my phone, I could take the uh, micro SD card out of the device and pull it in 
uh, and plug it into my computer. I connect it via USB cable, etc. Now, in this case, you can see it is noticing there are actually three videos on this camera. This is the one that we did yesterday, just as a little test. We won't be showing that. Thank you. Um, this is the one we started uh, that is really, really short, 14 seconds, because that's when our battery ran out. So we're not going to get that one off here. And here, this one says a minute 26. So this is the video we want. And I'm going to go ahead and um, save this one to my computer. And it says it's going to put it on the, the in a particular folder, and do I want to erase it off the camera? For now, we're just going to leave everything there. We really just want it off the camera and onto the computer. So you look in the bottom left here, it's doing our transfer. It should only take a couple of seconds more. Um, things you want to keep in mind. The longer the video, the longer everything's going to take. You know, there's going to be a couple stages. One stage is getting it off the camera itself. Uh, so, you know, minute 26 video, looks like it took about 30 seconds here. All right, so we're going ahead and we are done with this program. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And we're also going to minimize this video here. And then we're going to switch over to our uh, video editing software. And in this case, our video editing software is Windows Live Movie Maker. Uh, this is a free program for anybody using Windows. Uh, the other option would be, um, oh, shoot, what's the Mac program? I just blanked. iMovie it would be the, the, the program that comes with the Mac. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I want to import a video, and so I am going to actually, hold on just a second here, I'm going to go into my documents folder, and I want to go into my videos folder. I've, I've basically figured out ahead of time where it put that video I copied over there. So we go there, videos, and here's my video. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and drag that right over into my video editing program, and it's going to pull that in. And basically what I've got here is kind of a film strip now that I can use to work with. And you'll notice that imported very quickly. Um, if you have a much bigger video, it may take a few minutes. Uh, when we record super high definition video off of the big camera that we use in this room, uh, it can pull that in, and then it can take you know 20 minutes to kind of make the video editable. And then so. Keep in mind, we're keeping it short here, and everything's going to run hopefully pretty darn quickly. Okay, there's several things I can do with this uh, video here, and one of the things that I definitely want to keep in mind is about 15 to 20 seconds in, Sally, Sally had a little bit of a flub. So what I'm going to do just to start is go ahead and kind of find that point. And because I know it was so um, short into the video, I'm just going to hit play and kind of get to that point. Ungifted by Gordon Cronin. Donovan is well known for playing pranks around the school. He has zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. But it was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed the, high, the middle school. Uh, see what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're going to pay attention a little bit, and we're going to figure out where Sally kind of uh, wanted to back up to. Okay. So we're. Is this a fun? Yes, this would be a flop. So I need to start back, and it was a complete accident. Okay. Oh, we're moving the microphone. Okay, so I'm going to back this up just a little bit. I'm going to find that point just before she starts up again. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do what's called a split. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got everything up until that point and then the rest of the video. Okay, and so she's going to start with... It was a complete accident. Okay, so now what we need to do is start finding where it was a complete accident was said the first time. Zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. But it was a complete accident. Okay, so encouraged by a couple of friends. Zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. Okay, so I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to split again. So what we've got now is the beginning up to the end of that one sentence. We've got that flubbed area, and then we've got where she picked back up again. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm now going to delete that bit out of the middle. Point. All that, gone. That's all it took. That's all it took. Okay. okay. Um, I'm also going to save my work as we're uh, going on here because we'll just call it my movie. Um, so I'll replace that. So, you know,
program crashes, the machine starts smoking, Ooh, whatever, yeah. you know, we can, we can get out. Well, actually, thing. if the machine starts smoking, we might have a bigger problem. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Now, what's going to happen here is a couple of things. I've now got a cut in here. And if I play it back, we want to see kind of how well that works. So let's, let's see what happens if I, if I don't do anything. Zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. It was a complete accident. That's not bad. That's, that's she, she jumps a little bit, I think, uh, you know, but what we can do if we want in between there is we can add an animation and kind of change how it goes from one to the other. And in this case, uh, we've got lots of options. And I think if, let's try this one and see what happens here. So let's play that back again. He has zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by... It was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed... Eh, I don't know if I'm liking it. <laughs> uh, kind of mediocre. Yeah, right? kind of mediocre. But let's, let's try one more, just for fun, and then decide if we want to keep that or, or, or go through. He has zero impulse control, and actually he's also encouraged by... It was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed... Eh, maybe a little better, but you know what? Let's, let's just go ahead and not do any at all. <laughs> no, we'll just do a jump cut, okay. basically. All right. All right. So now what we're going to do is we need to add some stuff to the beginning and to the end. We want to have a little bit of uh, titles. That'd be nice. And we want to have some credits. So I'm going to put my cursor here at the beginning of the video, and I'm going to go back home and find a little button here that is add a title. And it says, okay, so we're going to go, uh, I'm going to pull over the here, uh, ungifted. By Gordon Corman. Type picking keyboard. Uh oh, what's happened to my keyboard? I don't know. Nope, keyboard is on. Let me turn it off and turn it back on again. We're just having a grand old time today, yeah, aren't we? Well, little things happen, don't they? Well, I like Gordon. Um. There we go. I don't know. Had a wireless keyboard. Had to reset it there. Mm -hmm. uh, a book talk by Sally Snyder of the Nebraska Library Commission. Okay, that looks good. And then, you know, do we want it to? Let's let's have it. You know, we we can do it Star Wars style. Maybe Star Wars style is in here somewhere. <laughs> let's just let's just do a regular old scroll. So if we play this. Um, you know, it's just scrolling up. But I, I believe there is a kind of scroll into the distance sort of Star Wars style. Okay, now definitely what we want, though, between the credits and uh, Sally's speaking here is one of those animations. So let's go ahead and we get all sorts of styles here. Um, let's, let's, let's bring her in with pixels. That looks fun. Okay, so we'll play this back again. I'm gifted by Gordon. Okay. And does that, that come in through, Christopher? Yes. Well, okay. Now I'm going to jump to the end of my video and go back home here and add some uh, credits. And so um, presented by Sally Slater. Did the... everybody some credit here hey. and again how do, how do we want those credits to, to scroll here and I'm gonna let's uh, let's pick this oh I like this one okay and you know we, we can also do things like make the text bigger and all sorts of different options on that so you can really let your creativity oh go crazy yeah this this, yeah. this this can go nuts here so let's go ahead and watch our end oh and we want to we want to uh, also put a transition into our credits. So let's go back to our animations and since we pixelated in the one way, let's go ahead and pixelate out again to keep some consistency going on there. So we go ahead and click play. And then we've got our Ooh, credits. And I, I am just barely touching on the things that this program will do, but you kind of get the idea of what's going on. You can add 
text over the video. So if you yes. want to provide information about the book, kind of at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you want to um, make everything black and white or sepia toned, or there's all sorts of stuff you can do built in here, especially under visual effects, where you can change the look of the video and things. Can like that. you, for instance, um, import say the logo of the library? Yes, um, you can add, if I go back home here, there's this snapshot. Mm -hmm. So if you have a graphic, a, a static graphic, you can insert that into your video and, and say, I want it to play for five seconds uh, after the credits, but before mm -hmm. Sally started speaking, something like that, or at the end, or things like that. So, well, yeah. that's just, mm -hmm. I think that's something that they would want to do. Uh, we do want to remember that we were editing probably less is more. Yes. Well, and for example, you might want to uh, put in a the logo of the library at the beginning. Yeah. Fade into Sally. When Sally's all done, fade out to just a static image of the book. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then fade into the credits. You know? Yeah. Th there's lots of things you can do here. We're kind of not doing some of this stuff in interest of time, basically, yeah. at this point. Okay. We're so. Have a lot of fun, though. Oh yeah. All right, so I've saved my work. Now that what I have to do, though, is what I've done is I've saved a project in this program. I now actually have to take the results of all the editing I've done and save it as an actual movie, a video file. Okay? So that's where over here it's this save movie. Now you've got all sorts of options as to how large and what aspect ratio and all these other things. We're going to keep it nice and simple, and I'm just going to do recommended for this project. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and save that uh, in my videos folder. So I need to go to uh, documents. Nope, sorry. Actually, I'm just going to save it on the desktop. And we're going to call it ungifted book talk. Okay. And we're going to save that. Now, here is another instance where how big your video file is, how long your video file is. Um, whether it's HD or standard definition, that sort of thing, this is going to take longer. So you kind of get the impression here about how long this, our video is, one minute and 17 seconds long, and it's going to export out, and it's going to take about a minute to um, save that video file. Um, if we were to record a live speaker on our large video camera at full high definition, this can literally take, you know, if it's a one hour talk, it can literally take two hours to do this step right here. Yeah. Now, you can continue working on your computer. It's not going to take up the whole thing. But um, I generally try to set this and walk away because the more processing power the computer has to do it, the faster it will do it. Um, also, the more powerful your computer. So you want, you know, if you're going to do video editing, you probably don't want one of the computers that you let the public use. You may want to actually, you know, one of the staff machines, one of the more high powerful power powered machines. If you're going to do a lot of heavy video editing. You might want to buy an actual computer just to do this. It's not required. I'm just saying, the further you get into this, you start buying equipment specifically for it. Okay. But you, but you can do fine. With yes. What, with what you have. Yes. This is not a top of the line machine we're working on right no. now. No. You know. And we're broadcasting live while we're doing it. So I mean, this is we're we're, we're taxing this machine pretty well and it's handling it just fine. Okay, so uh, we can now play our video back, uh, or we can open our folder. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, open folder here just to have it available, and it is on my desktop, and there it is. It is a Windows Media uh, video file, and let's just go ahead and play this back and make sure it kind of looks okay. okay. You, you prepared for this, I'm Sally? Ready. You're ready? Okay. Whatever it is, I'll, I'll be okay. I'm going to shrink this down just a bit to make it a little easier for everybody to see. Ungifted by Gordon Corman. Donovan is a well known for playing pranks around the school. He has zero impulse control, and actually, he's also encouraged by a couple of friends. It was a complete accident the evening that he destroyed the front of the junior high school gym and interrupted the big important basketball game. He's called into the superintendent's office immediately. And the superintendent writes down his name in his school and then is called away for another emergency. Donovan is off the hook, just briefly. He knows it's going to come any time. Imagine his surprise when a letter arrives at his home and his family is informed that he has been selected to attend the Academy of Scholastic Distinction. 
Donovan knows that he is not gifted. He barely passes his class at the, at the junior high, so he knows he has no chance at the academy. However, the superintendent will never think to look for him again. Ungifted by Gordon Corman. All right. Now, see, and, and I'm already critiquing myself <laughs> on this. Um, well, you know, just just real, real quick, let's let, let me just point out one or two things here uh, that we can do. I'm going to just pause on this. Uh, well, let's let's pause with Sally's eyes open. There we go. Um, it's a little dark, but like here's the two hooks on the wall where we took the the, the framed oh, artwork down. I didn't even see that. Right. Um, and then over here, you notice we have this, this kind of beige colored wall, and then we have this gray thing on the wall over here. So again, like we said earlier, we're working with what we got. Yeah. And so this is not bad. Oh, this could be way worse, but I'm just looking at the stuff kind of in, in the background and whatever um, to do that. So these are just things you think about, you know. But hey, this good video. All right. Well, and we want to mention that Sally held up the book and did not uh, obscure the title or author's name. Yes. She was very careful about the way she held up the book. Mm -hmm. Might want to think about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't hold your hand over the, the title and the author. Which would be easy to do. Right. All right. So, next step. Okay. Let me close some of my programs here and um, do this. All right. So, next step is we're going to upload this to YouTube. So, for everybody to see. Why not? All right. Yeah. Sally's excited. Okay. <laughs> so we're in our YouTube account. We have already uh, logged in. As you can see, our account name is Nebraska Access. So for those of you who haven't done this before, this is a very straightforward process. I'm going to go ahead and click Upload. And depending on your account, you may be limited to 15-minute videos. Our account is not, to be honest. We're not sure why. Mm -hmm. uh, they just keep telling us, congratulations, your account is now enabled for uploads longer than 15 minutes. All right. Thanks. Book talk, though, if you're doing a 15-minute book talk, it's probably, hopefully you're covering a lot of books. All right, so we're going to select files from our computer, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to our ungifted book talk, click open, and notice that uploaded almost instantaneously. Yes, yes. Now, very short. Yes. Very short. Way A, it's one minute and 17 second video. B, we have a very fast connection here in the building, so that's really what, what, what kind of happened there. And so it is still, however, processing it, but it says now processing your video, it will be live at this URL. But there's a couple of things you want to consider here. For example, what do you want to title it? Well, by default, it's titling it the same as the file name, but we don't need that .wmv on the end, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, in a description, Sally Snyder of the Nebraska Library Commission talks about, and I'll fix that spelling error in a minute, ungifted by Gordon Corman. Okay. Ungifted is a word. Commission, however, is misspelled. So we'll do that. And Corman is correct. Uh, tags, book talk, books, uh, NLC, uh, YA, you know, whatever tags you want to add to that. I'm going to go ahead and choose a category, and you can see things are happening kind of as I'm doing this. The thumbnail has been picked. I think that's a great thumbnail, um, but you can choose those. Well, we'll put this under education. We're going to go ahead and make this public, and we're going to give it a Creative Commons license. Real quick, public means anybody can find it and view it. Unlisted means anybody can view it, but they have to know what the URL is of the video. Okay? Um, if you search for it, you won't find it. You have to know it's there. And then private means only uh, as, as we're the people who uploaded it, I have to provide a list of email addresses of YouTube account holders who are allowed to see it. Oh okay. So you can, you can save, you know, create videos and share them just with your family, for example. In this case, public is, is definitely our option there. Okay. Uh, and so I can pick different thumbnails here. I kind of like this thumbnail, actually, where Sally's a little tippy of her head and, <laughs> and, and do that. So we're going to go ahead and set that. And then we've saved everything, and it gives us this little URL right here. So if we click on that, you'll actually see our video has been uploaded and is now available on YouTube. Okay. Now, one more stage, okay? yes. because the Library Commission has a website. We have a blog. 
Uh, so what we want to do is we actually want to post this video on our website. We're going to do it on our blog. Now at this point, how you do it for your library is going to vary. Okay? We use WordPress to run our blog, so we're going to be showing you WordPress. But there are some consistent things that will pretty much apply regardless of how you do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, our commission blog website here. Uh, and it's NLC blog. I'm going to log into it to actually create a new blog post. Yeah, as far as we know, we're, unless Sally really, really asks nicely. Uh, or, or, no, it's a well, good example. No, yeah, I know. We're so going to leave it up. Yeah, that. this is all going live. Yeah, this is a good example. I was going to include it in, um, as some of you may know, when we do recordings of our Infamous Live shows, we include links to anything mentioned. Yes. So I've already added into our delicious account TechSoup for Libraries okay. URL, and I was going to add this link as well, so you have an a video example right. of one that's been done um, okay. here before. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new post on our blog, and here we go. And now we're going to call it uh, ungifted, unfitted. That would be a different book. <laughs> And now what I have to do here, and this is probably the part that's going to be consistent almost regardless of how you do this. I'm going to go back to the video I, on YouTube. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select here copy embed HTML. Okay. I'm copy that. I'm going to make sure I'm on the HTML editing portion and then I'm going to go ahead and select paste. And what this is going to do is this has basically written the code for me. Oh, yeah, excellent. Cool. All right. Uh, so we're going to select our category here, which uh, let's say youth services, and there's also our books and reading. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and click publish. Give that a couple of seconds to work. And now if I actually view the post on our live website, there is <laughs> our video with yeah. Sally's lovely look <laughs> right there on the screen. So what we've done here is we've talked about what is a book talk, what's important, some basic tips on video. We actually recorded a book talk, flubs and all. Yes. <laughs> we edited our book talk. We added some titles and some credits and, and did the, the editing of the flub in the middle. We have then saved that as our newly created video. We uploaded it to YouTube so anybody can now watch it and find it on YouTube. And then we've taken that YouTube video and we've embedded it in our website, in our blog in this case. So think about how this could dress up your website or your, your, your blog if mm -hmm. you did this. And we've been going for 50 minutes here. This hasn't even taken an hour to do all of this. And including getting new batteries. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this wasn't, this wasn't hard. It was kind of fun. You had fun, didn't you? I had fun. Oh, good. And I would like to encourage you to ask your teens if they would like to do some video book talks, because yeah. I bet they'll run with that. I bet they will. But your mayor may also think yes. it's mm. fifty. Um, be great. And this, again, is something that um, you could do with the best sellers, um, with new books in your library. Uh, you know, you, you could do this regularly. Um, every week or every month decide that you were going to have um, book talks. I, I think this is something that would really enhance mm -hmm. your library practice. Um, just want to throw in a couple of other examples here, okay. specifically to book talks. This is Reading Rooster Recommends from the South Carolina State Library, and, mm -hmm. and I believe she does one about one a week. Um, I do not actually know the genesis of the whole rooster part of it, um, I, I will leave that to you to kind of uh, figure out what, what the story is there. Uh, and um, basically they're doing exactly what we just did, is yeah. lock off the camera, talk about some books. They, ha they have a prop. They have the rooster. Yeah. Um, they edit it, save it, publish it to YouTube, and then embed it in their website. So, I mean, that's, this, this is yeah. not hard. Now, you want to go a little further. Um, I'm going to pull up one here called Library U. This is from the Escondido Public Library, and I just heard a presentation yeah. from them at, at Internet Librarian. Yeah. They're actually creating videos. These are not book talks, but they're videos done with members of the public. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Now, uh, the first one was with the, uh, 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 someone from the Genealogical Society uh, that yeah. I believe meets in the library. Uh, they have done other ones, uh, grief management through autistic expression, lessons we can learn from bees. As far as I know, he's a local beekeeper, and so he wanted to do a presentation. Uh, there's cooking ones. There's uh, color therapy uh, with a color therapist, and here's here's how to make Optimus Prime out of balloons. Oh, Ooh. I need to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a balloon artist in town now, and and here's uh, introduction to natural cleaning. In some of these cases, these people do own local businesses. Yes. And they're not really advertising their business per se. It's kind of like PBS sponsorship. You know, yeah. they're doing a little video. They're allowed to mention their, um, their that they have a business, yeah. but they're really to teach you how to do something. And the library does this filming, and sometimes it's at the library, mm -hmm. sometimes it's out in the field. I know there's at least one gardener one. Um, but then they've also um, there's a Holocaust survivor uh, video that they have somebody who lives there mm -hmm. locally. And they've, they, these have become popular enough that people are coming in saying, can I do a video? That's neat. And it's called Library U. So kind of this would be like the next stage beyond yes. what we're doing here. You know, staff doing a book talk, maybe the teens or your members of the public doing a book talk. This is now members of the public doing other things that they usually mm -hmm. do, but tying the library back into it. Um, so there's lots of ideas of what you can do with video uh, that... that doesn't necessarily take a lot of time or a lot of effort. No, and um, it would be fun. And is a reason for people to come to your website. Yes. Um, and that's really, you know, kind of what you're doing here is trying to um, offer people a service that they uh, like to the point where they uh, keep coming back for more. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Uh, I know that some of the ins and outs of, oh, this software, and now we're going to move it over here, might have been a little confusing. Um, you know, if you really want to do this, uh, just give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll be happy to kind of run through it with you. Um, and if you do do this, would you let us know? Yeah, we, we would really love to see this on your website, and we would really love to know that you did it. Mm -hmm. So let us know, and uh, we hope you have fun. Yeah. I want to stress one more thing, too. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I am by no means a video editing expert. I, I kind of know enough to get it done, um, but I know we have some things coming up where we're actually considering setting up two cameras and then editing content from two cameras into a single piece of video so that one camera is facing the speaker, one camera is facing the audience. So instead of when somebody asks a question, we pan over to the audience and then pan back to the speaker, we actually just insert the content from the other camera. And I'm both looking forward to doing that and scared out of my gourd uh, <laughs> as to how much time it's going to take because that's going to that's be an extra level of skill that I will be learning by doing, and I, I hope it, it turns out well. We'll, we'll yeah. find out. That's in December, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's next month. So. Actually, you know, the best projects are the ones where you're scared out of your board. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I'll, I'll, I'll get into it, but I'm going to be I'm going to be setting aside some time to be yes. doing that editing. I mean, that's. But I know I know people in libraries who are very busy. Mm -hmm. um, I still think that this is something they can do without a huge um, investment of time. There's, as you saw, our equipment, um, the flip cam, you can borrow it. Mm -hmm. uh, the software is a free download. So not expensive, mm -hmm. not time consuming. Um, I think you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck on this one. I really do. And, go ahead. No, we have a suggestion from someone oh, in uh -huh. the audience. Um, Ellie um, Rizig, who's from actually Morrill Public Library here in Nebraska, said okay. that for a, for a suggestion she has for the background is to throw a piece of fabric over a portable projector screen. So you have oh, something good. behind you, you know, fabric. Yep. So you can either use the screen itself, or if you want some sort of a color instead of just plain white, just a solid mm -hmm. color of some sort. 
Um, you can just throw that over it, and that's your flat, you know, your background behind you. Yeah, I, I keep threatening to bring in a sheet to cover the windows behind us uh, and, you know, just tack it to the ceiling and just let it drape. Um, that's great. Um, some libraries have gone as far to actually paint a wall that green color for, yeah. for doing green screen. Oh. That's not something we've, we've that's done here. That's a whole here. other project. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so there's all sorts of possibilities you can get into. So. That's a great suggestion. Very simple things that mm -hmm. you probably have laying around. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, cool. All right. Uh, anything else from the audience? Uh, I don't know, if anybody has any questions, comments, suggestions, type them into the questions section of your um, interface, and we can answer them here. That's the only thing that came through during okay. the session. But right. um, if anybody does have anything. Yeah. Now i got to get Sally to do this once a week. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> She's laughing at me. This is this is not a good sign. <laughs> well, Sally has a blog post once a week. She has a blog post. Well, reading. yeah, I, I think what I suggested was uh, when you do one a week, one a month is a video one. Oh. See, yeah. and See, yeah, then it's, it it's it still what there. Sally's yeah. reading, but mm -hmm. one of them is a video every month. And that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, if this is something that you're, like, intimidated by out there and saying, oh, my gosh, how are we going to do this regularly, don't think, like, if you do do a newsletter or a regular um blog post about what I'm reading. I know some library directors do that as like just a on their websites as well. Do this yet yeah, once a month do the video. Or every other month say let's try and do a video one this time and see how it goes. And then you just get used to it slowly. You don't have to totally jump into it, you know, head first and say, every week we've got to do something. No. Yep. I'm right. feeling if you get your teens involved. You yeah. Teens, more video yeah. than you know what to do with. Get the teens into it, yep. But they're very creative. And, and they have a lot of energy, and this would be a great project for them. It, yeah, they have enthusiasm and technical knowledge more than me, I know for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. and, and I like the idea of having the mayor come and do one, too. Mm -hmm. the city yeah, I know a lot of libraries have used that um, the read software for the read posters and brought mm -hmm. in your local officials to mm -hmm. do post for a poster. They could do this as well. A, yeah. a local band just filmed a music video in our mayor's office. Really? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. I watched, uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but they, they and then he's on the drums at the end. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, hey, maybe, you know, talk to your mayor, do one, have him do one at his desk, you know, or in the library. Yeah. Anyways, okay, I'm off Good idea. just a little bit. Right. But that's so. fine. <laughs> well, anything else? Any last minute uh, comments from you guys? No, I, I'm good. Yeah. Yep. Um, hope you had fun. Do we it. had fun. Have fun. Yes. <laughs> and do let us know. We really do yeah. want to hear about this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. No last minute urgent earth shattering questions came in, so I think we will wrap it up for today. Thank you, Michael, Sally, and Laura. That was yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> And very cool to see all the actual of an in an hour from start, sort of start to finish. You had to think about what book you were going to do ahead of time. Yes. So there's a little prep work ahead of time there. But the actual doing of it and getting it out onto the Internet for people to watch, yeah. boom, it's done. Um, so thank you very much for attending this week. And I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is um, 17 things to soak up. Can you click on it? Um, you know, as many of you hopefully know, we do here on Nebraska Learns 2.0, a 23 things type program where the, you learn some new service or tool every month. And um, this is uh, Westside High School. I know I remember it. <laughs> um, did a version of it for their teachers. So you can. Uh, this is, she's going to talk about, Carrie's going to talk about how she um, reworked it to do a thing specifically for teachers in the school. Um, so not just for librarians, so that you can use the kind of program for anything. So she's going to be on the show with us next week. And if you are interested in following Encompass Live, you can see right there at the top of the screen. I'm going to change. Um, you can click on that, and we do have a Facebook page. There we go. Um, that you can um, follow. I just like the page, and we post on there uh, anything um, whenever we have... Uh, Sessions, I got reminded this morning, right before this session started, join us right now for this session. When the recordings are ready, we post them up on here. Any new sessions are put up, anything related to sessions. So um, definitely uh, follow us on Facebook if that is where you get your information from. You can see what we're doing there. There we go. Okay, it doesn't look like anything... 
has come in yet. So thank you very much for uh, joining us this week, and I hope you'll join us next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.